Get in your bed. Get, get, no, get in your bed. Get in your bed. Get in your bed. <laughs> what is that face? Sorry. He's waiting for this. He's waiting for a treat. Here you go. Up. Ah. Say please. Speak. Oh, bless you. That was a sneeze. Speak. 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 Louder. <laughs> Spin. Sit. Speak. Speak. Okay, that's a good boy. He's like, but I can't be any louder, mom. I'm using my indoor voice. I have trained him so well. Welcome back for another movie reaction. And this one is going to be a fun one. But first, I want to give you a quick message from our super cozy sponsor. Cozy Earth is a premium bedding and loungewear company. They're the world's foremost source of high quality, authentic bamboo linens, sleepwear, and loungewear. They were also chosen as one of Oprah's favorite things five years in a row. And yes, you heard me, the Oprah. Thank you so much to Cozy Earth for sending me a bedding set and pajama set of my choice and for sponsoring this video. The first thing that really impressed me was the adorable bag that the sheets came in. I don't want to harp too much on the bag, but I just couldn't get over how cute the color and the style was. The pajamas were so soft and so light and had that material that keeps your body cool. I also requested one of their newest colors, powder blue, and I'm so glad that I did because life is just more fun when it's colorful. I'm not gonna lie though, it was really hard choosing between their two new colors, powder blue and lilac. But the white trim is such an added bonus to these pajamas because it adds such style and flair. The bedding was probably my favorite part and not just because the bag it came in was super cute. <laughs> yes, I'm still obsessed with the bag, but its contents are what blew me away. I loved the earthy olive green color and it's gonna go so nicely with all of my future plant babies that I plan on adopting for my room. They were also very light and airy, which is so important for someone like me who gets uncomfortable at night from overheating and sweating. But the best part about the sheet set was the fitted sheet. I requested a queen, and in the past, almost every queen that I've ordered is just too small for the mattress and always ends up causing the fabric to pull and pop off that one dreaded corner. These sheets had more than enough fabric to get completely underneath the mattress without any of that pulling. And the pillowcases were really nice too because they opened from the middle, keeping the pillow securely inside and any tags from tickling your face. And best of all, the sheets are definitely Toby approved and it was extremely hard keeping him off the bed before I was done making it. If you guys are interested in picking up any bedding or pajama sets, Cozy Earth was kind enough to provide me with a discount code. Use my code MirandaLorian30 to get 30% off your purchase or use the link in the description and the discount code will automatically be applied to your order. Thank you again so much to Cozy Earth for making today's video possible and for supporting the channel so I can focus on making more content that you guys watching can enjoy. Speaking of content, let's get back to the video. Once again, thank you so much to Cozy Earth for sponsoring this video and making it possible today. I did a quick wardrobe change into the pajamas that they sent me because they are my favorite and I have basically lived in them since I have received them, and yes, I've washed them, just in case you're wondering. Anyway, in today's movie reaction, we are going to be watching The Breakfast Club. This came highly recommended by one of our Patreons, Tyler. And speaking of Patreons, I want to give a huge shout out to our newest top tier Patreon, Callum. Thank you so much for joining the family and for supporting the channel and making, again, all of this possible. I'm going to be honest with you guys, the only thing I know about this movie is that it kind of made an appearance slash cameo reference in the movie Pitch Perfect. I think they sang like the main song from this movie. So the the one that goes da la 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 la. I think the lyrics actually go, won't you come see about me? I'll be alone dancing you know it baby that's really all i know all right i would say i am sufficiently comfortable i hope you're comfortable grab a drink coffee tea i got water because water is good for me wish i had a snack but i haven't hit the grocery store recently so there's that anyway without further ado let's watch the breakfast Club. <laughs> almost forgot the name for a second the breakfast club I was n Hold up. This music needs to not go so hard. That brought a tear to my eye and I'm not even sad, okay? 
Is this gonna be a tearjerker? Cause I did not bring tissues. I'm downloading this. We can do it after the movie, Miranda. Chill, chill. I can't help but move. Chill, Miranda, they're gonna think you're weird. <clears throat> they already know you're weird. Oh, I remember. Oh no, it's not the part. Singing warning. If you don't like people. <gasps> Wait, what? These children that spit out uh, try to change their world are immune to your consultation take quite a while. I love David Bowie. I love David Bowie. Labyrinth? Yes. I I'm sorry, I had to read that. I saw David Bowie's name. Freaked out. Shermer High School. Oh man, I already did high school. 60062. They're gonna make me relive high school. Sacrifice a whole Saturday in detention for whatever it was we did wrong. Oh we my god. Wrong. They blow up a locker? Easy to make us write an essay to an amusement. I don't like Mondays. Same. An athlete. A basket case. Oh. Princess. Oh. And a criminal. Oh. Correct. Is this going to be a commentary on, like, labels? That's the way we saw each other at 7 o'clock this morning. We were brainwashed. Never got Saturday detention, never- Well, I got detention once, okay? I don't want to talk about it. Have a good day. He looks like he's about to, like, crack up laughing. Well, we're not supposed to study, we just have to sit there and do nothing. Well, mister, you figure out a way to study. Yeah. That doesn't sound too bad to me. Sometimes what I wouldn't give to just sit here and do nothing. Oh, wait. I feel like I- Never mind. You wanna blow your ride? I know school is going to give a scholarship to a discipline case. Blow your what? Hmm, what were you in high school? Hmm, I was a theater kid. Theater nerd, does that shock you? Maybe not. Did sports for a little bit. Definitely wasn't popular. <laughs> okay, so we got a jock. We got... I don't know what she is yet. Got dude with nice hair. Mmm. Maybe the cool kid? Not necessarily a bully. Maybe a bully, but just very intimidating. Then who is she? Maybe like the loner? Stoner? This. Ponder the error of your ways. <laughs> uh, why? I do not mean a single word repeated a thousand times. Damn it, he caught me. <laughs> Mr. Bender. Crystal. Good. If you learn a little something about yourself. That's what I was thinking about. <laughs> Does Barry Manilow know that you raid his wardrobe? I'll give you the answer to that question, Mr. Bender, next Saturday. Don't mess with the bull, young man. You'll get the horns. Oh. You know, I, um, I gotta look up Barry Manilow. I know who he is. I just can't think of what he looks like right now. Oh my god, I forgot how gross high schoolers are. Eating your hand, you're not gonna be hungry for lunch. Oh my god, I'm gonna throw up. <laughs> it's the noise too. Like I don't care what they do. It's some. It's like if I can hear it. It's the sensory overload of it. I don't want it. <laughs> I used to do that with my pens, okay? <laughs> okay? Sheesh. Well, well, you first. Don't copy me. It's the shits, huh? <laughs> the literal shits? What are we supposed to do if we have to take a piss? Leave. You gotta go.
No. What is he doing? You're pretty sexy when you get angry. Okay, so he's edgy too. We'll get the prom queen impregnated. Oh. I need to shut up. Nobody here is interested. Okay. You couldn't ignore me if you tried. Are they gonna get together? I mean, if you disappear forever, it wouldn't make any difference. You may as well not even exist at this school. <gasps> High school disappear. Well, Kids can be so mean. That's exactly why I'm not heavy in activities. You're a big coward. I'm in a math club. So you're. <laughs> <laughs> that kid's at that me, Mr. Math Club. That's me. I'm not gonna run out and join one of their fucking clubs. So let's watch the mouth, huh? I'm in a physics club too. <laughs> I'm in a math club, uh, the Latin club, and the physics club. Physics club. Physics <laughs> club. I love that kid. He's my favorite. I figure all I need's a lobotomy and some tights. Oh, he is so mean. I wear the required uniform. Tights. Shut up. <laughs> and don't screw around. What are you gonna do? Drop dead, I hope. You can really tell that, I don't know their names yet, but like, bad boy, jean jacket guy, deeply insecure. Generally people that name call a lot are the most insecure people. You should really fix that. My genius? No, you're an asshole. What a funny guy. Fix a door. What a funny guy. <laughs> Why is that door closed? You closed it. How are we supposed to know? We're not supposed to move, right? She doesn't talk, sir. She squeaks. I want to know more about her. She hasn't obviously spoken yet. The door's way too heavy, sir. I'm gonna laugh if he's right. <laughs> hey, watch, watch the magazine. It's, it's out of my hands. These are extreme lengths for a door. What's the matter with you? Come on! Well, you know the school comes equipped with fire exits at either end of the library. <laughs> Show Dick some respect. Let's go. We got a smart ass and smart guy over here. <laughs> You're not fooling anybody, Bender. The next screw that falls. Okay, so Bender. Andrew, Bender. Eat my shorts. shit. Oh, this isn't the help? Rip. You through? I'm gonna use that. That's seven and clean when we first came in, yes. <laughs> the next time I have to come in here, I'm cracking skulls. <laughs> oh, he clearly says that a lot. What a wonderful thing for a teacher to say. What is that, like, quiet coyote? Does he feel bad? You did it now. I mean, I would take detention over prison any day. Why is he setting his shoe on f Okay. It's fine. She's gonna fall for him. She's gonna fall for him. I'm calling it. I saw, I saw her for a second. Oh! I was gonna say she looks like Professor Snape, but then I saw that, I was like, what? So she's a talented drawer. I did not think being grossed out was going to happen because of this movie. At least there wasn't food there. At least she wasn't seasoning her food. There is that. Mole really pumps my nads. Oh, yeah. Ooh. I love his work. 
They're flirting. I don't know. My mom said I was, but my dad told me she should blow her off. Wait a second. Do we know why they're in detention? I mean, I don't think either one of them gives a shit about me. It's like they use me just to get back at each other. Ha! Oh, what? What the hell? Is she crying? You are a parent's wet dream, okay? <laughs> Ew. What would you be doing if you weren't out making yourself a better citizen? Why do you have to insult everybody? True. Yeah, well, he's got a name. Yeah? What is it? Brian. Brian? He looks like a Brian. What's yours? Claire. Claire. It's a family name. Oh, it's a fat girl's name. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. I'm not fat. Well, not at present, but I could see you really pushing maximum. <gasps> oh, my God. And there's fat people that were once thin, but they became fat. He's such an angry person. Have you ever been belt up? Over the bra? Under the blouse? Shoes off? Hoping to God your parents don't walk in? Do you want me to pee? Over the panties? No bra. Oh, you can see like he's enjoying this, too. Calvin's in a ball on the front seat past 11 on a school night. Calvin Klein? Everything keeps connecting me back to Back to the Future. Everything is a reminder. <laughs> Anytime you're ready, pal. <gasps> Knew he wasn't actually that tough. So it's the toughest talkers. Because <laughs> I'd kill you. Oh my, why is he such an instigator? You don't talk to her. You don't look at her. And you don't even think about her. He's not even looking at his knife. He's not even watching it. It's so interesting to me that they all clearly attend the same high school, but none of them knew each other's names. I mean, I guess if you go to a fairly large high school, that makes complete sense. Like, I... I went to a fairly large high school but like smaller high schools it's interesting maybe they're all in different grades though i don't know maybe so falling a broom around after shitheads like you for the last <laughs> i look through your letters look through your lockers he's got the most dirt pun intended i am the eyes and ears of this institution oh yeah because everyone always sees them as being invisible well they don't see them at all the custodians know. You know, I'm getting to a point where inside, whenever Bender speaks, I'm internally, I'm screaming like, shut up. Will you just stop? Like, stop making it worse. But then there's also like this lovable side to him where you can see that he's angry and he's in pain and eh, she's even joining in. What's her name? Andrew Claire Bender Bryan. Getting good with names. Mr. Vernon. There's a soft drink machine in the teacher's lounge. Let's go! She is very intimidating. What do you drink? Does she still have that knife? Five breaths. Well, okay. Why are you here? Um, here we go. Finally! Brian here is a cherry. A cherry? She was in a plane. To France. I'm not cherry. What does that mean? I've laid lots of time. <laughs> I think it's okay for a guy to be a virgin. I say who cares? Who cares? <laughs> Oh my gosh, crazy what high schoolers like really care about, but there are a lot of parallels that I see. Where's your lunch? You're wearing it. You're nauseating. What's that thing she just put down? What is what is that? <gasps> sushi? Oh, I love sushi. Oh no, you're gonna make me so hungry. What's that? Sushi. Yeah. 
rice, uh, raw fish, and seaweed. Fancy. Mm. You won't accept a guy's tongue in your mouth, and you're gonna eat that. <laughs> I would eat sushi for breakfast, lunch, and dinner every single day if I could afford it. <laughs> What's your problem? Though that's that's this. Why does that baloney look disgusting? Is that a pixie stick? I haven't seen one of those in years. This is the most interesting thing I've ever watched. <laughs> corn pops or something like what? Well, uh, those are called corn pops, right? Ooh. Nutritious. <laughs> PB and J with the crusts cut off. What, what do people got against crust? Crust? Crust did not ask to be crust. Stupid, worthless, no good, goddamn freeloading son of a bitch, retarded, big mouth, know it all, asshole, jerk. This makes a lot of sense now. You believe this? Huh? What is that, a burn? Like a it's cigarette? About the size burn? of a cigar. Yeah, okay. See, this is what you get in my house when you spill paint in the garage. For spilling paint? I need to sit with you fucking dildos anymore. I'd be angry too. <laughs> okay, that's impressive. I, I don't support the tantrum, but that is impressive. Not oh, not saved. That's on his that's on that button. Oh! What the This is this is a fantastic soundtrack. I don't know. So then what are we doing? She's always so creepily skulking in the background though. Sorry. Uh, okay, so he has a guillotine and it chopped his shoe off. How is he still in school? How has he not been kicked out? He's got a weapon in there. Drugs. He's got drugs. Boy well, has marijuana. Oh, <gasps> he's got the weed. <laughs> he's probably never you seen it. This? You approve of this? <laughs> he's. I think he's my favorite character. He's so funny. I just find her very interesting. I want to know more about her, and she keeps taking stuff. Once again, coming in with that soundtrack. And it's not an 80s movie without a running montage, is it? Hey man, you don't know what you're talking about. No, you don't know what you're talking about. No, we're through listening to you. We're going this way. Did she make a squeaking noise? What was that? I wanna be a that son of a bitch. Why would he do- Oh. He's trying to distract them, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. Yep. Wow, he's taking one for the team. He really doesn't care. <laughs> you think this is cute? You think he's bitching? Is that it? Let me tell you something. Bitching as in complaining or bitching as in cool? What's so crazy is I, I have seen instances of this when I was in high like, I've seen this stuff before. I make $31,000 a year and I've got a home and I'm not about to throw it away on some punk like you. Oh, I mean, this is the 80s, right? Man, I'm a swell guy. You're a lion sack of shit and everybody knows it. What's he gonna do? 
I want to know right now how tough you are. Come on, I'll give you the first punch. Let's go. Come on, right here. Just take the first shot. This is like his home life. Oh my... G That's what I thought. You're a gutless turd. This makes me wonder what schools were like, like high schools were like in the 80s. Did this stuff actually happen? Did this actually happen when I was in school? Like, I don't know. I always kept to myself. I was so quiet. How horrible to be talked to like that as a student. I couldn't imagine. Is he in the ceiling? Yes, he is. Oh my. I've been eating a drink. Naked lady says. Pencil. There's like nothing happened yet. Could you describe the ruckus, sir? Watch your tongue, young man. Watch it. <laughs> oh. Oh. What is this? <laughs> what is that noise? What noise? Really, sir, there wasn't any noise. <gasps> uh, <gasps> I will not be made a fool of. Spoke too soon, bud. <laughs> Funny how they're all starting to look out for each other a little bit more, but oh my gosh. Oh, I would, oh, yep. Be doing the same thing. Looks like a cucumber. That's a lot of dope. He's funny, but that kid's a little creep, too. <laughs> oh, there. How on earth did you do that? I would love to know how you lit a match with your face. <laughs> Chicks, can I hold this smoke? That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know how popular I am? Very. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh my god, look at all that smoke. Hey, detention looks like a blast. Why wasn't I invited? Well, this is a, definitely a change from the beginning of the movie where they were very standoffish, didn't know each other, and now they're hanging out, smoking weed. <laughs> yep, absolutely. Yup. Mr. Oh, Mr. Tierney. And how does he not smell that? Slight mental illness. He knows what's going on, the custodian, yeah. Be something that you, you and I could could keep between us. What are you gonna do for me, man? <laughs> and your social security number is 049-3809913. What? Are you psychic? No. Was it Did all right? Do you mind telling me how you know all this about me? The confidential files? Oh! <gasps> I stole your wallet. She's a... Uh, do they call them kleptomaniacs? The people that steal? I don't know. I guess I never throw anything away. <laughs> Neither do I. You know what? Same. You realize you made yourself 68? Oh, I know, I know. I goofed it. What do you need a fake ID for? So I can vote. You want to see what's in my bag? No. <laughs> She's like, well, I'm gonna show you anyway. Is that all stuff she's stolen? Sit in alleyways and like talk to buildings and wear men's shoes and that kind of thing. I'll do what I have to do. Why do you have to do anything? My home life <gasps> is unsatisfying. Oh, oh. I wonder if they all have shitty home lives. Allison says she wants to run away because her home life is unsatisfying. 
Is he still high? <laughs> well, everyone's home life is unsatisfying. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, I understand, but I think hers goes beyond what... She's right there! <laughs> what? But I didn't dump my purse out on the couch and invite people into my problems. Did I? So what's wrong? What is it? She wants people to know. What did they do to you? They ignore me. Yeah. Is this movie also a reflection on, like, parenting? Now, this is the thought that wakes me up in the middle of the night. That when I get older, these kids are going to take care of me. Be nicer to them, maybe? Just a thought. Would you drive to school naked? <laughs> um, Just drive to school naked? Uh, would I have to get out of the car? Yeah, exactly. Great question. That's what I was wondering. I've done just about everything there is, except a few things that are illegal. Ooh. I'm a nymphomaniac. Why? Are your parents aware of this? The only person I told was my shrink. What did he do when you told him? He nailed me. She's, she's got to be lying. I don't think that from a legal standpoint, what he did can be construed as rape since I paid him. She's got to be lying. There's no way. She just wants a reaction. See, it's only one question. No! I never did it! I never did it either. I knew it! I knew it! I knew it. They I'm were just trying to get the yet. truth. I'm a compulsive liar. I... This surprised me not. You're just pissed off because she got you to admit something you didn't want to admit to. Okay, fine, but that doesn't make an A-less bizarre. She's so smart, and she's so manipulative. Oh, are you bizarre? He can't think for himself. Peer she's pressure. Right. Hey, school's hard, man. His butt, like his bum cheeks. Well, we know how hairy it is, right? Were you trying to wax him? That's that's disgusting. Most of his hair came off. <laughs> his skin too. Oh my god. And the bizarre thing is, is that I did it from. I'm picturing butt hair and skin. <laughs> and his attitude about about weakness. And the next thing I knew. I jumped on top of him and, and started wailing on him. And afterwards, when I was sitting in, in, in Vernon's office. Doesn't seem like he'd be the person to do this, though. You, you apologize for something like that. Well, at least he feels bad. I won't tolerate any losers in this family. Your intensity is for shit. Win! 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 You son of a Poor kids. Well, you know, when my light didn't go on, I got an F on it. His probably his first F. I've never got an F in my life. Eggs, I knew it. I That would destroy a kid like this. So neither one of you is any better than the other one. I can write with my toes. Woo! Brush my teeth with your feet. Play heart and soul on the piano. I can make spaghetti. With your feet? No, thank you. I can uh, tape all of your buns together. <laughs> Put that on your resume. <laughs> They're all like, mm, I'm, I'm, I'm curious now. Hey. <sighs> all right, that's great. Where'd you learn to do that? Camp, seventh grade. Wow, the things they teach at summer camp. I may as well not even exist at this school, remember? They were so close to being friends. Okay, so go home and cry to your daddy. Don't cry here, okay? This 
conversation has been all over the place. They were cool, and then they're not. Then they were cool again, now they're not. What is going to happen to us on Monday? When we're all together again. Oh, are they going to just go back to ignoring each other? Because you know how shitty that is to be with someone. You don't suck the balls and stand up to your friends and tell them that you're going to like... Oh. Poor, rich, drunk mother in the Caribbean. Shut up! And as far as being concerned about what's going to happen when you and I walk down the hallways of school, you can forget it, because it's never going to happen. Just bury your head in the sand and wait for your fucking prom. I hate you. Yeah? Good. Oh, my God. Would you do that to me? I don't have any friends. Well, if you did... I really, I'm really feeling for her. Your friends wouldn't want you to be with me. <laughs> wow. You're so conceited. I, I'm so glad he said it. I'm so glad he said it. You know, you just don't understand the pressure that they can put on you. I don't understand what? Pressure? You think I don't understand pressure, Claire? Well, fuck you. Fuck you. Oh, I'm, I'm going to cry because Brian's crying. Why is it Brian crying making me cry? I'm here because Mr. Ryan <gasps> found a gun. <gasps> what? Why? The light's supposed to go on. Oh, my God. Oh, Jesus. I had no idea this was... You brought it up, man. I can't have an F. Oh my God, it's because he got an F? That's why? I can't have it. I don't know, my parents can have it. Stop putting pressure on children. They're children. Let them be children. Everything's ruined for me. Oh. Ryan. I get, I kind of get this movie now. I get it, I get it, I get it. I think I get it. I swear to Went off in my locker. <laughs> a flare gun? <laughs> the emotions are all over this place in this movie. They're they're crying and laughing, yelling and then and then laughing and then yelling again. I just I think I have emotional whiplash. You want to know what I did to get in here? Yes, I do. I do. I really do. Please tell me. Nothing. She's just hanging out in I there? I didn't have anything better to do. <laughs> she is... She's probably the most free of all of them. Am I right? She symbolizes true freedom. Everyone else symbolizes pressure, social norms. I get it. This, this is a genius movie. This is a genius metaphor for social norms status quo and she who seems to have the least amount going for her she's the most free she's just here because she wants to be and then and then look at this they've all shared and now they're all like they've laid it all out they've been emotional it hurt it sucked but then look at look at the after I love this movie. We're not. What a good song too, like. <laughs> I love that. Oh, I love that too. Oh, I love this movie. I get it, I get it. I get what they're trying to say. I love when I get it. Sometimes I can be real oblivious. Why are we up in the ceiling again? Did you not learn from the first time? You just don't want to write your paper. Right? <laughs> True, but you're the smartest, right? Well, <laughs> we um, trust you. It's really not hard to BS a paper. I've done it so many times. All right. It's not like it's being graded. Could you imagine? I got an F in detention. Come on. 
I hope they all remain friends. You don't go through something like that together and not remain friends. <laughs> I remember doing this as a kid, putting on makeup for the first time or having it put on me. And your I might when they would do that, my eyes would not stop watering. It's a lot better. I don't know how her eyes are not watering everywhere. Oh, Liz. Why are you being so nice to me? Because we bonded. I wish we would all open up with each other. Like, can I be honest? I feel like I feel like we should all do that more as a society, but also add the non-judgmental portion to it. You know, you need to not be judgmental of someone else's life story in order to get the the effect. I don't think Whoa! For a split second, I had no idea who that was. I did not recognize her. She looks so cute. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. Why'd you do that? I knew you wouldn't. She got a crush on you, dummy. I said before how your parents use you to get back at each other. Wouldn't I be outstanding in that capacity? Ah. ah. She's so pretty. <laughs> See you next Saturday. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Don't tell me it's over. No, 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 no. It's not over. Go set the parking lot on fire. Go right back into detention. I So they end up together. And then Bender and Claire end up together. So who does Brian end up with? Love strange, so real in the dark. <laughs> Wait, there's five of them, right? Okay, so I think. Yeah. Right? If that's a real diamond, that's one expensive gift. Aw, okay. Is she gonna be the one for him? Sincerely yours. The Breakfast Club. <laughs> okay. Everyone knows about this part. The fist, the fist in the air, like that's... <laughs> that was a really good movie. Ah! Pull yourself together. It's fine. It's fine. I'm gonna go sob in a corner now. I don't even know where to start with this one. What a beautiful movie. It had so many incredible themes. And there were definitely some darker aspects to what they talked about that I was not expecting. I was not expecting the sexual undertones of like angsty teenagers and, you know, the reference to the gun and Brian being so distraught over getting an F in a workshop class because he has been under pressure by himself, by his parents for so long forcing him to get good grades. The only reason grades mean anything is because we give them meaning. It's this very arbitrary way of measuring someone's success and future potential. I don't know, I got a lot of thoughts on education in general because actually, fun fact, I originally went to school to become a secondary teacher. Being really, really passionate about education I have a lot of thoughts on this and just grades in general, but that's that's a topic for another day, another video, and probably for a totally separate channel that has to do with something else. What really stood out to me the most was the only adults you see in this movie are like, briefly you see a couple of the parents at the beginning, and then you see the teacher, Mr. Vernon, and you see the custodian. And I would say the custodian was probably the coolest character 
out of all like out of all of the adults because he was probably the most down to earth everyone you know the teacher thinks he's probably better than the custodian because the custodian is the one sweeping up the floors and stuff but really we find out that the custodian he's the eyes and ears he probably knows more than anybody else in the school while everyone else is led to believe that they're the know-it-alls that they're so smart because they have these prestigious careers or or degrees or so on and so forth it's just so interesting this movie was clearly all about perspective and as somebody who as i've grown up in life i understand how important it is to understand perspective in people you only understand things from your own limited perspective and experience in life and you never know what's going on behind closed doors. You never know what's going on in someone else's life. This is honestly the reason why I try to be as kind to people as I can. Obviously, there are days where I'm having a really shit day. We're all human. We all make mistakes. We all say things that we regret. But at the end of the day, I always try to stay aware enough to be kind to others because having gone through things myself and having friends who have gone through things and seeing people actually start to open up more in this day and age in 2023 it's become very apparent i think to myself and other people how much people are really struggling and we are really starting to i think understand hopefully that everyone's going through something and it was really cool to see that once they all really started to open up after a very emotional conversation with them when they were sitting down on the floor. It was interesting to see them get so heated and start yelling at each other and then for Brian to drop this bomb on all of them talking about how he had, you know, considered taking his own life, which is a very, very serious topic and it affects a lot of people. So once he opened up about that, then it kind of dawned on everyone. You kind of saw that switch at that moment when he shared his story. You saw the switch in all the other characters. They were like, oh my gosh, you don't know what's going on in someone else's life. And I think that's where they all gained the respect for each other. I think that they needed to have and they needed to have that moment. And I think it's also such a beautiful metaphor for why we should share our emotions with each other and why we should be more open and accepting to hearing everyone's story. I mean, it's impossible to know everyone's story because there's so many people and and then as humans we can only take so much of other people's emotional baggage, but to be able to at least be amongst peers where you feel safe and secure and not judged how liberating that feeling is and actually I didn't think to get so philosophical or emotional in this but wow i mean th this movie has just touched something really deep inside of me as somebody who at one point in my life also saw a therapist it's something that i cannot recommend enough to people to be in a neutral space with somebody who is not judging you at all where you can literally just word vomit everything that's ever happened to you and however many sessions it takes for you to be able to process everything that you've been through that is something I wish everyone could experience at least once in their life. Or if you can't go to a therapist, have, have a friend or like a family member that you just know deep down would never judge you for anything. It is the greatest feeling to be able to just let it, let it go, essentially. But going back to another point that I think I was trying to make before that I don't know if I finished that thought. Every student's story had to do with their parents. And... They kept trying to hit this point home, I think, that as as parents, maybe back then, maybe this was like more of a commentary on parenting at this time, I think in the 1980s when this when this movie came out. But I would say this is a generational thing. Like, I think every generation deals with parenting like this. You know, parents are humans too. They don't know what to do. No one's perfect. Like, no one has this all-encompassing handbook telling you how to parent but i think that this was a really good lesson about stopping the pressure being put on youth or just people in general like look at what happens when you put people under this microscope under all this pressure 
and they feel like they have to act a certain way, be a certain way, and not totally be themselves, and how much unhappiness comes about when you force somebody into this little pigeonhole. The one thing that was so common that every single character shared was this really tumultuous, almost toxic, abusive relationship with their parent, and how the pressure and the expectations of their parent, how it was put on them, and how that drove them to either acting out, or being rude to people, or just hating themselves, like self-loathing. This is such a genius movie. And they were able to tell this story and create this lesson, teach us this lesson in such an entertaining and creative, artful way. Love it. Love this movie. Absolutely love this movie. And the soundtrack was bomb. I also really want to mention how Allison, I think is her name, the more quiet, reserved one that sat always in the back, she ended up being my favorite character. And I think I mentioned this during the movie. I tried to talk about it as much as I could without talking over the movie and missing anything, but she turned out to be my favorite because through all of that mystery that she had about her, she was clearly very, very intelligent, very manipulative, and she kind of had me thinking a certain way about her until I saw it clear as day that she knew exactly what she was saying to every single character, and she did it with a purpose. She wanted them to spill their darkest secrets so that they could kind of open up to each other and show each other their own perspective on their life and why they are the way that they are. And while she seems like the weirdest, the one with the worst life circumstances, she was the most free out of all of them. Every single person there was held down by something. Andrew was held back by his parents and his jock athletic status in the school being Mr. Popular. So therefore, he felt like he had to treat people a certain way in order to make himself seem better than everyone else. Claire, kind of the same thing as Andrew. She was Mrs. Popular. She was homecoming queen, probably soon to be prom queen. And she even mentioned that she was also held back by her own status quo, her little popularity click group, and that's why she felt like she couldn't even talk to these people that she shared detention with as friends after detention would end because she didn't want to be deemed as uncool. Brian got to the point where he wanted to take his own life because of the pressure that was put on him by his parents and himself and the school and the academics club to constantly outperform himself and his classmates. That kept him from being free because he was constantly trapped inside this mental prison that he had kind of built for himself and that his peers and his parents had built for him. And then lastly, we have Bender who, again, was being held back and being limited because of this relationship, this abusive relationship that he had with his dad and probably his mom as well. We didn't really hear about her too much. But because of that relationship or lack thereof that he has with his parents and all this anger that he had built up inside of him, that directly was controlling how he acted towards other people, how he acted in school, probably the grades that he got. So every single character you see this kind of wall or this mental construct that they built or that other people built for them that really kept them confined within this, I don't know, cultural, social expectation that they felt like they needed to be in in order to be cool and accepted by their friends and family. Where you have Allison who was a potential runaway from home, had no relationship with her parents because she said that she was constantly ignored by them. You had her who was essentially free from all of that. She said she didn't have any friends either, so you can just see that because of all that, she was the most liberated. She was the most free out of all of the children. Which is so sad to me to think that it took her getting to that point where a lot of people, if they had that life situation, it probably destroyed them, break them down to a point where maybe they wouldn't even be able to function. But she, at the end, seemed to have this more positive and emotional and empathetic look at all the other characters and just at life in general and 
wow, I feel like I could write a book or write like a analysis essay on this movie. Sorry, I did not mean to get so philosophical with that. Actually, yes, I did. I am philosophical. I have no apology. I'm not going to be sorry about it. That's just who I am. I always look for the deeper meaning in things. And another thing that I found really interesting was this was also a lesson on not labeling students as a teacher, you know, labeling them either the jock or the misfit or the class clown, the smart one, the dumb one, like labels don't help anyone. And oftentimes you're limiting the very students that are going to be in charge of your future and are going to be taking care of you. Just all in all, like compassion for someone goes a lot farther than most people think. Toby, what did you think? I, I think you barked a couple times while we were watching the movie, so that was nice. I think he's gonna rate it a 10 out of 10. Clearly, I mean, he fell asleep. He must have loved it so much. <laughs> I love movies like this that make you think, that really puts you in other people's shoes, which is again, something I feel like we really need to do as a society. We need more empathy. When everyone feels like they're not being judged and they're not under a microscope and they're not going to be negatively judged for everything they do or say and they're allowed to make mistakes and learn from them and grow from them. <gasps> Breathe. I think everything would just work out if we would just look at each other like that. Movies are such a fantastic form of art and I think it's such a great way to hit certain themes home and I think this movie did it fantastically. Thank you so much for the recommendation, Tyler. I'm so glad I finally got around to watching this. And once again, thank you so much to Cozy Earth for supporting and sponsoring this video and making it possible. I got a lot of movies though planned for the near future, so I'm very excited for that. Also, I wanna give a huge shout out to Tony for editing this video. You have been doing a fantastic job with the video so far, and I am so eternally grateful for you because you taking the time to do such a wonderful job editing these videos has allowed me to have more time that I now don't have to spend editing where I can actually watch more movies and put them out to you guys and again I'm just I'm so grateful for you but like I said I have a couple more movies in mind coming down the pipeline very soon actually one of them is a more modern movie that you guys will see when I release it and then I think we have a couple more classic older movies that I think you guys will definitely know. So I'm very excited for you to see those. I'm excited to watch them. If you guys are looking forward to future movie reactions on this channel, make sure to like, subscribe, and click that bell button. I would appreciate it. Toby would appreciate it. Thank you guys again so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.